Today's project will require the use of your colored pencils, a regular pencil, and a piece of white paper. Hi class, it's Mrs. Lachinsky. Today we are traveling to the country of China to learn about their artwork on vases. They did 300 to 600 years ago in the Ming Dynasty. These vases were spectacular and they included all kinds of images, some of which were dragons. Also, there's images of popular flowers and wildlife. One of the most popular flowers in China is called the cherry blossom. And you can see them here in, in Washington state as well. They're all over the world and they're very beautiful. They're on trees. In fact, have you ever noticed the paintings that are often behind me when I'm doing these recordings? Well, they feature cherry blossoms. These are two paintings that I actually did a long time ago. We're also gonna be talking about the element of art space and the principle of design balance. This image is of a traditional Chinese dragon, which is a symbol of good fortune in their culture. I want you to pay attention to how the artist who created this face used the space in this face. There's something called positive and negative space. Positive space is the image that is in the forefront that takes the attention. And in this case, well, obviously it's Mr. Dragon right here. He is the, in the positive space. The negative space is more this white area where there's nothing going on. We can think of it like the background or the unfilled area. It peeks through some of these parts of the dragon between each of these spikes on its back. If you look carefully here between the back of the dragon and this curled, I wanna say it's sort of like a vine. It almost looks like mountains or an island coastline perhaps that you can see in this white negative space. So when you create your own image on a vase shape, be thinking about not only what you choose to put in your positive space, which is perhaps an image of dragon or flowers, but also think about how you use that white space, that negative space of the porcelain that is also able to create shape and meaning. What do you notice about these vases? What is different about all of them? If you said shape, you're correct. All these vases have a different shape. This one here looks like it even has little handles at the top. This one here is very narrow at the top and wider at the bottom. This is a Ming Dynasty styled vase my daughter Grace did. She chose to do a dragon. She chose to do branches that were very similar in length to the length of the vase, the height of the vase itself, you notice that? And that creates a sense of balance in the space. There's a balance here between what's sticking out the top of the vase and what's happening in the bottom of the vase. Lizzie also created a vase. Her vase is pretty much filling the space up with different flowers. There's negative space, white space still present, and it's about equal with the positive space. The first thing you need to do is divide your paper, make sure it's in portrait orientation, right in half, because we're going to balance the space in this scene evenly between the vase on the bottom and what we put in the vase on the top. I'm going to give it a fairly tall mouth. We'll call it the mouth of the vase, okay? And then my vase is going to be pretty wide. I like Nice wide bases. There we go. Lots of room to design things on. Okay, a lot of times these vases would divide areas of the vase up. And when I do the top of the vase, I do like to put a little oval up here to show that that is the opening at the top. You can do that, a little oval at the top. And then I'm going to divide this into sections. So you can divide your vase into as many kinds of sections as you want to, but I want this big area. This big area is going to be the, where my scene is going to take place. So on here, I'm going to create a very simple bird. This bird's going to be on a stick, so maybe I'll just draw my stick. The stick's going to go from one corner to the other. Maybe I'll even make the stick fork off, just like that. I'm going to put my bird around here. Now my bird is going to have an oval body. Don't go all the way down to the stick and hopefully you can see it. I'm going to drop pretty hard so you can see it. There it is. That's the bird's body. This is where the little bird legs will go, little feet on the stick. So there's the bird. Now the bird's head is going to be another oval right here. Another oval for the bird's head right there. 
and the bird will have a little beak right here. That's a little triangle you stick on it. See, pretty simple. Now the bird's wings are another oval. We got lots of ovals here, but the oval comes to a point down past the bird's back. Here we go, just like that. See, it's like an oval with a point. That's its wing. This bird is sort of bending over, but maybe it's looking at something. And the bird's eye is right there. The bird's also gonna have a tail. The tail starts around the behind the bottom of the wing and it can even go further past the, the branch. See that? The tail is like the bottom part of a triangle, just like that. I'm gonna do some little offshoots and in fact, I'm gonna do some this way too. You can just figure out as many offshoots as you want. Think about how you wanna fill the space. And then I'm gonna put some flowers in here. And it, the interesting thing is it's going to be like the cherry blossom flowers. There's five petals, but these ones will be blue. You can do whatever pattern you want. You can do flowers, you can do waves, you can do natural scenes, you can do mythical scenes. If you wanna tackle that dragon, feel free, try to do your own dragon. I wanna focus on what sort of pattern to do in here. Maybe a swirly thing, I don't know, a swirl. Down here, I can do other patterns. Maybe I'll do some more flowers, more swirls. Rectangle, circle, rectangle. You figure out if there's a pattern you want to do in your design. All right, now it's time to get out the darkest blue pencil you've got. And because in the Ming Dynasty vases, they use something called a color called cobalt blue, and it was very much like this color. I don't think this is cobalt blue. All it says is blue, but this is the one we're going to use because that's the only one I have in my pack. You can take a step back and say, do I have enough balance? Is there enough blue to fill in the white? Or should I have a few more flowers in there? I might do a few more flowers because I feel like there needs to be a little bit more blue in here. So the cherry blossoms bloom on trees. So when you, when you harvest cherry blossoms, they're on sticks. Now you have to decide to balance the space, use of your space, how many sticks you're gonna to do to balance out the size of this. If we just did one stick, it would look rather imbalanced. If we did two, maybe a little bit better. Uh, how tall you want your sticks to be. If my sticks were only this big, there would be a lot of imbalance in space because the weight, well, first of all, there'd be a whole bunch of space on this paper we didn't fill, but also the weight of this, this huge vase needs some substantial sticks and flowers to, to balance it. So let's see. Now sticks are, let's see, that looks pretty good. In my pack of pencils, I do not have pink. I have a lovely 12 pack of pencils from Crayle, which I really like, but in that pack, there is no pink. So we need to make pink. With pencils, it's a little more complicated to mix colors, but it's not impossible. So what you need to do is grab your red and your white, and we'll start with the red, and I will show you how to make these pink flowers. So next to, or on top of these sticks, you'll make your blossoms. You're gonna have five petals and they're gonna be circles. So circle the red, not too heavy because it will be hard to make it pink if it's too red. Okay, now that you've done your five circles, you grab your white pencil and you're gonna do the circles round and round on top of the red. Make sure you cover all that red and mix it up good. And then it becomes more pink. See, it's pretty pinkish. The center of a cherry blossom tends to be darker than the rest of the flower, so I like to fill that in with just the red, and it looks pretty pink. The flowers do not need to be exactly right on the stick because we can make little sticks that connect them, and that looks nice too. And I'm going to fill in these branches. First, I'll work on the center branches in brown. And once you have finished your sticks, now you can connect to some of these other ones you put in, just like this, make little sticks connecting off the big ones. What you can do is you can erase that line you made in the middle, you don't need that there anymore. That was just to help you know where to put things. Here's the final project. Thanks for joining me for art today, learning about art from another culture. I hope you enjoyed it and learned some new things.